I swear, it doesn't matter how I do this. Those cows always come over here and pull those hoses out and stomp on them. Welcome back, everyone. I wanted to do this video about a month ago, but it just it didn't work out very well. I've done this video actually five times now. And it's actually a little bit better than I waited because we have run the 875 for a while. And so this will make not just for a good progress report on what I have fixed and repaired, but also how it's been running. And spoiler alert, it's been running great. So if you watched the walk around and I noticed it got quite a bit of attention, I really appreciate that, uh, you guys watching it. Um, the major issues with this were that tire the brakes, the air conditioning, and the steering. I can't do the thing with my fingers where I have the thumb out and the pinky curled. So anyway, four major issues. And they've all been addressed, and there were a variety of other major and minor issues that I kind of discovered when I was uh, working on this. So we'll get through everything here pretty quick, or this will be another 45 minute video. There's just no need for that. Um, the tire, we had somebody come out and mess with we took the dual off which required about a can and a half of pb blaster and the torch to get all these nuts heated up to where we could get them off and when we put the dual back on we clean the threads and everything and we clean the inside of the dual up and it looks a lot nicer but we definitely had somebody else come out and do the tire here and no we didn't replace the tire obviously we just put a tube in it and because this tire is in good shape really and the tire guy also swapped a tire onto the correct rim for the 800 while he was here so you know we didn't call him just for this we made him work a little bit but he's been doing tires for a long time and he was done in a couple hours i mean it didn't it didn't take him really all that long considering so uh that got fixed the steering which was the next most important thing. We replaced the suction line, which you can see that right there with that red stripe on it. We replaced the suction line. And I also pulled the steering pump off here and made sure that the bearings weren't getting all grindy and that the uh, input shaft wasn't all loose and stuff and everything in there is nice and tight. Um, it does pull suction. When I had it sitting on the back of the pickup, I spun the shaft with one hand and put my palm over the uh, suction port and I could feel it pulling so it's it's doing good there the steering works wonderfully I mean it's so smooth it's so wonderful but we were having some issues when this thing sat for about a day the steering would kind of back off of the prime and this has sat for about three weeks so if it will start if the batteries aren't dead I'm curious to see whether or not the steering will come back online quickly or if it'll take a few minutes so We'll get to that later in the video. Um, the air conditioning, I spent a lot of time on, so we'll talk about that in a second. But the other issue, the brakes, the road brakes do not work. I don't know if the caliper leaks, but the master cylinder is leaking. Um, and that requires at least a seal kit. I can't find a seal kit. I need to call around and see about probably just another master cylinder but they're kind of expensive from what i saw online and they were all out of stock online and that's the other thing i'm kind of worried about and then i'm also thinking maybe the brake caliper should be replaced as well i don't know if it leaks or not but i know the master cylinder leaks so the road brakes were a write-off but i did manage to get the parking brake adjusted once i figured out you could actually adjust it more than like a quarter inch and so now the parking brake does work but it doesn't do a very good job of stopping this thing. Um, which I know you're going to say, oh, that's obvious. It's a parking brake. It's not supposed to do that. Uh, which I understand, but it, it would have been nice if it did. But it goes over center real nice and, and everything works good on it. Uh, yeah, we'll get to the air, we'll get to the air conditioning last because that's that was a little involved. So I serviced everything on this. I got everything greased. It probably could stand to be greased again, but I greased all the u-joints all the pivot points that fitting back in there if you can see it with all the grease piled there i did get it to take grease i it didn't take a lot but i did get it to take grease uh, it just piled a lot there and i didn't bother to wipe it off and then this fitting here didn't they didn't want to take very well but everything else was not 
uh, was not too bad. The transmission was a little low and we got it filled up so it's it's good and we've been checking it and I only mention that because yeah they put dipsticks back here but that's for the transmission back in there and it sucks to get to and to put fluid in so transmission's fine hydraulic fluid we topped it off after I changed the suction hose and uh, I changed all the filters including the hydraulic filter and all that so you know we, we refilled all the hydraulic fluid I have not noticed a lot of major leaks at the steering cylinders, which is awesome. I have not noticed a huge amount of leaks at the remotes here. It looks dirty, it looks oily, but all the implements we have, uh, I've noticed the male ends on the quick couplers are getting a little worn down, particularly on the disc. And so... Uh, they, they leak from there, not so much from the remotes, but we still plan on replacing these because this is just not a good system. And I can't help but notice that the coons have been out here doing stuff. Have they broken any tubes on the drill? It does not look like it. That's good. Okay, so yeah, no leaks back here. The axles are not leaking. Uh, the pinion seals are not leaking. The transmission does leak, I'm almost certain. I just don't know where. Uh, all the tires are still holding air. I did check the final drives and both axle fluid levels when I changed all the filters and was servicing this. And the, uh, the planetaries and everything check out fine. What's interesting, though, is that this one, when we started running it, I looked out one day and the entire inside of the wheel was completely brown, covered in dirt. And I thought, oh, we got a major leak. Not, not really. Um, I suspect that somebody's been in this before based on the amount of RTV that is smushed out around the planetary housing cover. Uh, but I can't say for certain whether or not someone's been in there. It, it's not leaking bad. I, I only added like a pint to this one and the others were all okay. So those all checked out. And then, as you probably saw, I replaced all the filters. I didn't change any fluids. I just changed the filters. Uh, the bypass oil filter that's down there, the old one that came off, did not want to come off. Uh, that was the toughest filter. And really, everything else came off pretty easy. So, brand new shiny Baldwin filters. Somebody's probably going to throw a fit that we're not using, like... Uh, you know, versatile or cat or whatever. Everybody's got a filter that they think is like the best filter ever. And if you don't use it, they tend to throw a fit. It's a lot like, uh, it's a lot like engine oil in that way. People get real mad when you don't use the, the you know, the right engine oil. Uh, and a lot of YouTubers, this is just a quick tangent. A lot of YouTubers will not say what brand they use because they don't want to fight in the comments section, but I'm extremely petty and I don't care. So this gets, this either gets uh, Traveler from Tractor Supply, or Shell, or Mobile, or Mystic, or uh, whatever we have on hand that says 1540, that's what this gets. And just as an aside, the oil consumption on this is normal. It's not burning oil or anything outside of what it uh, should. So, yes, new filters, uh, new, new belts. I was going to say new fluids, but I didn't put new fluids on. I put new belts on. It only had one fan belt, one water pump belt, and no AC compressor belt, which I missed in the walk around. So I got all those replaced. And then we did a variety of electrical work. A lot of it was related to the air conditioning, which we're going to talk about next. But um, the ground wire that used to run from here to the starter motor, the yeah, the starter motor to frame ground, we cut that wire out and replaced it with a wire from here to here. So that's, it's, it's a lot better because the one that came off of here didn't have the insulation. Uh, the copper had oxidized pretty bad. It, it was, it was rough. And we also replaced the motor to solenoid wire. And it looks a lot better because the one I pulled off, uh, all the insulation was gone and the wire was getting pretty crispy. I imagine it had cooked at one time or another. And then the final major electrical thing that we did is replace the alternator because that's why the batteries were not charging uh, in the walk around that's why they were dead is because the alternator didn't work so we got that fixed 
Uh, how much was this? This, I think, was about $250 from Walmart. Walmart has the oddest things, but this is from that rare electrical brand, and I've bought more than one thing from them, and their stuff's pretty good for Chinesium, but that's about all you can get anymore. I'm not paying $600 for a Delco alternator. That's ridiculous. Uh, and I think this is 110 amp, if anybody is wondering. So... As for the air conditioning, uh, I did a lot. I want to try and keep this pretty, uh, pretty simple. Basically, when I went up there and I pulled the cover off, there were two things that were a problem. Number one, the airflow sucked from the vents. And number two, there was no cold air. So the reason the airflow itself was bad, I thought the blower motor was shot. The blower motor is actually fine. It works perfectly. For some reason, and I'm not going to crawl out there and take that plate off because it's kind of a pain, but for some reason, uh, there was a block-off plate. So when air came off of the blower motor, it hit that plate, and so it had to like go up and over it to come out the vents into the cab. I don't know why that was there. It looked like it was factory, but I took it out, and we have excellent airflow in the cab now. That problem got solved. And then there was a bunch of wiring and stuff I had to do along with that. Uh, the compressor, number one problem, was that the belt was gone and there was no power. So, long story short, on this, I ran new wires. We actually had to run new wires twice. Originally, I ran a new wire down and spliced into the main harness on the other side, on the, on the frame rail. That essentially did not work so what we've got it set up now is we have run a wire from up there uh right off of the low pressure switch to the compressor and we've bypassed or did we bypass a low pressure switch i don't know the point is we've got the clutch directly wired to where it works because we have problems with it wanting to keep disengaging there's a short or something somewhere um trying to make it agree with the low pressure and high pressure switches just kept kicking it out and so it wouldn't run but it cools great once we got power to it and a belt on it i mean it you know the clutch engages fine will not disengage all the way but when it's running it runs fine it doesn't slip it cools perfectly uh no problems there uh we replaced the thermostat switch and the fan switch, the blower motor switch, both of those came from the 800. They were in good shape, so we did that. I also replaced the high side to condenser line, which you can kind of see in there. Now, actually, since, oh yeah, that's another little thing I fixed. These were so stiff before I couldn't turn them unless I had a wrench. So that's fixed now. Uh, but yeah, I ran a new high side down there, had a new line made up to the condenser, and we, oh yeah, that's what we did. Okay, so we ran new wires, we bypassed the low pressure switch, I believe, and we ran new wires to the high pressure switch, and then from the high pressure switch uh, over to the compressor. So the low pressure light does not turn on anymore because it's it's disconnected. And we'll probably maybe fix that correctly later. I don't know. We just wanted to make it work so that we could uh, run this. So I think that's pretty much all I did with the air conditioning. A hose, a bunch of wires, um, a lot of new ends. I put a lot of male and female disconnects on, new ones, because the old ones sucked. Um... Remove the block off plate, and and yeah, that's, that's pretty much all for the climate control. Get up. Trying to think, there was something else I was going to mention. I got most of my mental checklist gone over, but there was something else I was going to. What was it? I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remembered what the other thing was. I think. So when I was changing the filters, the hydraulic suction filter is, it's not a paper type, it's a, it's a steel filter. It is a perforated metal canister 
wrapped in a wire mesh. And when I popped it out, uh, the wire mesh was gone, which happens. Uh, you know, that mesh will disintegrate and the steering pump will eat it and push it through the whole system. So when I first did that, before I replaced the suction hose to the steering pump, uh, I was concerned that that mesh may have destroyed the steering system. And it didn't, because the steering works perfectly fine. Uh, I put a new filter in, and everything is fine. So the interesting thing about it is that the filter that I put in there, and if you haven't seen a picture on screen of the old versus the new filter, you should be seeing it right now. But down here, where that's at, that is the same filter and filter housing as is on the 800, which is not here. It's up at the shed, but it's the same filter. And we had one of those on hand because when we put the steering pump on the 800, we were going to replace that filter. And surprise, surprise, we didn't. But it didn't hurt to have that on hand, and it even had new gaskets with it, so that was cool. Went ahead and replaced that, and everything is, like I said, working just fine. So, I guess, I still feel like there was something else I, I did to this that I was going to mention. There, there's a whole bunch of little stuff, little things that I did. Uh, I did replace all the uh, air filters as well, in case anybody was wondering. So, what we need to do now is hop in here and get the steering wheel up. Uh, what are the chances you guys think that this thing is gonna... Ah, man, I may have got that a little too stiff. Well, we're not gonna roll. It was in gear. It's about to not be in gear, okay. Oh, new ignition switch. And a couple little bits of wiring in the dash. Okay. We're gonna see if it starts, which is one of the reasons I came down here. If it doesn't start up right away, I'm going to have to give her some ether. Come on. Oh. I'm actually surprised. All right. We'll let that warm up a bit, and then we'll kick her in high idle. Do we have steering? No, it's probably going to take a second. It wants to. Yeah, I really am surprised that that started. It shouldn't have. I'm glad it did. So, while that's warming up. Yeah. Fancy new fan speed switch. Why is that on? Is it... The door light switch still works? Really? That's weird. The, the parking brake light doesn't work now though. Which is strange, because it was working. I love electrical problems, don't you? So. While we're sitting here waiting on this thing to warm up a little bit before I rev it up, um, what we did with this tractor, we planted everything with this tractor. And I just, the cows knocked my ladder over, over there. I just noticed that. But anyway, we planted everything with this. Um, and we also did all of the disking with the sunflower there and the spring tooth thing, which is, it's not here, the spring tooth isn't. We did all of that with the 875. I really wish that I had had this ready to where we could have plowed uh, with this. But the 800 did all the plowing. That's okay. We're looking at doing some terrace work this fall out on the rest of the big field that we didn't plant. And so this thing may get put on the plow still. But we'll see. If it does, I'll try and get a video of it. But it ran really well. It did great with the disking. Uh, this thing is extremely good on fuel, and it might sound a little ridiculous, and I'll pay more attention when we run it regularly next. I'll pay more attention to the fuel consumption and how much I put in, but I swear this thing gets less than 10 gallons an hour 
fuel consumption. Now, granted, we don't run it at rated RPM. We only run it like at 1500 or, you know, between 15 and 18, depending. If we do the same thing with the 800. But, guys, I'm telling you, this thing burned less than 10 gallons an hour in fuel. That's absolutely insane for an 855 cubic inch diesel. I mean, granted, it's turbocharged, but still, that's that's really good. I, I don't know that that's a fact, though. I, I might be off. I'll try and pay more attention uh, when we run it next, and, and I'll get back to you on that. But that's pretty good. Is it going to... Oh, the throttle's a little stiff. Do we have steering? Come on, steering. Probably still got a leak somewhere once the steering comes online it is one finger steering i'm telling you all right well literally as i just turned the camera off because i thought it was going to take a minute the steering came back online so we're in good shape now we'll kick her down just to about a thousand We'll let those batteries charge up really good. So, we'll take one more walk around of it to make sure nothing major is leaking. And then that'll do it for this video. So, I appreciate you guys stopping by, showing an interest in this. When we put it back to work, uh, I'll make an effort to get some footage of it. And I hope to see you guys then. So, let's go walk around it a bit and we'll call her good. Let's see if the belts are loose. 